<clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Uncle Michael. But the tears, you have to bring it up. It's OK. And uh, that's a joy tear to see you here. But I dearly miss, um, I call an aunt, and, but also a mother who got me through the best and the worst. Lisa Laflamme, obviously, we miss you. But fast recovery, and there are many others that misses you. And with that being said, I want to take you all through the humanitarian crisis that you all have lived for the past few months, whether it was through a daughter, a friend, a journalist, or a stranger. And you all have contributed to the savings of these people. So thank you for that. This journey, I want to say, for me, was an incredible frustration, cries, and times laughs. And that's all possible because of the community, the friends, and the networks I built. Coming to a strange country, not only from Afghanistan, from any part of the world, their culture shocks included, Missing your family is a big part when you are 13, 14, 16. I don't know which one. <laughs> but the community I have built got me through my education, through, my, through learning about the sh weird Shakespeare guy. My English was not good, and I have to cry downstairs to make things work. Study ESL plus school. And this is what refugees will do. And this is what you all have been through. And education from the day one was valued in my family, through my father, my mother. Even though I grew up in a very conservative society, but I'm one of the luckiest that I had a very liberal home, which allowed me to have equal rights like my brothers. And that's what my family and you all stand for tonight. But that was only possible for a few years. After the common enemy took the few days of happiness of my life, that was my father. A police officer that believed in education, in equality, in humanity. Because why would I justify as a girl that I'm not equal? It should be given to me. But as my, thought, as my father taught me, nothing is given to you. You have to take it. And that's every Afghan girl. Every girl in any part of the world should do. We have to stand for ourselves. And that's what happened with the community of people where they saw my dad's sacrifice that have worked for peace, equality, women's rights, and her five daughters our PhD from Afghanistan. <laughs> Thank you. And it will continue, not only through her daughters, through the communities. And when I was the hopeless little girl who thought my dream was done, it's the dark time, that's when people like yourself stood up, people like Michael, who made me a daughter, a niece, a stranger and a savior as possible. Littles can do so much, and it starts from one person. It only started from me. It went through many other girls, through my non-for-profit work, advocating whatever I could do, despite if it's for Canada, if it's for Afghanistan, if it's for another part of the world. Our commitment doesn't end in one side of the world. It's humanity. If I'm hurt, you're hurt. And if an evil person like Taliban can stop me from going to education, tomorrow it might be my daughter, your daughter, or your family. And that's when it started with my family. Hearing about the provinces of Afghanistan are taken away, and slowly the schools are closing. That's when my heart starts beeping hard. The nightmares and the PTSD that I have experienced came back 
because the girls I was in contact and was sponsoring two non-for-profits and working different parts, was reaching out and I couldn't do anything, leave alone my own family. The family that stood out for everything that Taliban are against are now in desperate need of support. But I couldn't leave only my family as a priority. It's everybody else. But what, how can I look at my nieces and nephews and think that tomorrow they can't stand for themselves? And you might laugh. There's 20 of them, which I have never met. <laughs> and most of them are girls. I looked around my own family and said, Roya, this is the time. Helping one is better than helping none. As Rachel and Lisa explained, 27 people, no thank you. <laughs> At this time, 27 people is, can be a village in Canada, but that's my family. And that's not only my family in terms of blood and everything, but that's the girls that I want to run this country. And that's what I would do. It would take me days, just not me. Locking myself, doing the paperwork, getting them out. And those nights, well, I will never forget. But it was for a reason. The nights where I would call Rachel, four o'clock in the morning, any update, Rachel? No, go to bed. <laughs> and Lisa tonight and Michael lived that life with me in their homes. As we speaking about the community in opening hearts, that's what got me through. And please don't say in front of Lisa, any updates? No, staff, you will be fired. <laughs> she loves me to death, but she said, don't ask me for updates, Roya, because the situation was, here we are, and here we're not. Every minute, anything was possible to the point that my own family missed the bomb loss by 30 minutes. And so many have lost their lives. And tonight, I just don't want to end it with a thank you. I just want to say, you guys created a miracle. And that was possible through fast action, through a community, through contribution of each and every one of you. Whether it was opening your heart, opening your emails, answering your texts, Rachel, I'm looking at you. And Michael, when I was at my downest point and said, you are on a flight at 4 p.m., no option. And that got me through. And tonight I want to say, nobody is poor when they have a big heart. No country is small when we have great minds. And let's not forget those girls. Let's give that power even though we are facing a monster right now, but that monster should not succeed. And let's vouch for all women and girls and humanity. Thank you.